Hey, welcome back to Project Mockingbird. My name is John, this is the Firewood Restoration Station, and let's talk floor pans today. We are standing in where the floor should be on a 1969 Firebird convertible. There's a few things I want you to see or know before trying to throw this thing in that you probably need to be aware of for the best fitment, long lasting, and best they say, make the best of what you got kind of thing. And they're minor little things, but they're going to kick your butt later on. So I want to show them to you now so you can plan ahead or inspect these areas in particular. Now, I'm fully aware every build plan is slightly different than the other. Now, I've left this front brace in because it's the convertible. And as you can see, the reddish color primer, that is weld through primer. That's where I cut the initial part of the floor pan out. I finally got around to removing the rear section because I now have a full driver's side rocker panel. So I have some structure back into the car. These are running parallel to each other. Um, but in prepping it, one of the things that's very critical, coupe or convertible, doesn't matter, this area right here of the rocker panel, it needs to be extra, extra strong and fantastic shape basically little to no blemishes we've got some very light rusting on this one but not bad i'm gonna call that good um, now even a coupe has an additional brace to right about here inside this area here reason being is this is where they're going to tie the frame rail to the rocker panel they got a torque box that goes between these two so this metal is what you're welding to right here so it has to be good and then it ties in and it gives you the structure of the car so i'm just saying reason i didn't paint it is i wanted you to see what we're working with here very minimal rusting for a 50 year old part i love the condition of this and the other thing i wanted to point out this little square hole here is you guys some you might know what that is for some maybe you don't this is the rocker panel drain there's a little rubber flap that goes over top of that we're replacing the floor pans depending on the brand i've had a problem where the floor pan is not cut out right and it goes right over top that opening you've already got it put into place how the heck do you cut it well, that's what I'm saying. Before you install the floor pan, make sure you notch this out. That's one of the little tips I want to give you. Uh, so make sure this is good. Make sure this is notched out. But check this out here. The OER floor pan already has the notch cut out for it. I'm pretty sure AMD doesn't. Um, the other thing to keep in mind, this is that area that welds right down here, like I was talking about, to the rocker panel. And this panel here, the reinforcement, is what they consider the torque box. Now the factory, of course, welds right on this flange here, but they also weld this flange to the rocker panel. Well, guess what? We cannot get in there to weld that again. So I'll do the normal plug welds through here, rosette, whatever you want to call them, all through this area here. Then I'll actually, then when this rocker panel is in place, I'll come through here and do a little, you know, half inch, three quarter inch stitches of actual weld to the rocker panel because I try to compensate for the fact that I cannot plug weld or spot weld like they did from the factory so that's another thing you want to try to keep in mind um next thing we're going to do of course uh I'm kind of mentioned you'll see the weld through primer so prep all your surfaces put some kind of a primer or something in between so they don't rust and that's one of the things that's very important and if you're reusing the frame rails same thing clean them up and then put your weld through primer these frame rails i am not going to reuse i kind of let them in place just as a point of reference um, but we all know this car got hit hard back here in this corner. And as I've been kind of monkeying around in here, and once I cut the floor loose, we noticed this, uh, this between the rocker panel and the frame rail popped over. This one's actually closer. You can almost probably see with your naked eye in the camera, but there's about an inch difference. Kind of find out, I think the collision actually hit this way. I was looking inside this fender wheel, it's actually kind of bulged just like this whole back seat brace pushed that way. And if we look carefully at this fender wheel, oh, look what we have here, a nice little buckle. I've been working on separating it, but I wanted you to see this where I finished it. But it's creased here pretty good, and it's actually kind of buckled this component here. Um, I was going to replace the outer, but we're going to go ahead and replace the inner now, too, just the same, unfortunately. But that was something that I didn't see until we get this all, car all torn apart, verifying that, you know, the collision damage is a little heavier than I thought. And even this panel here, it's got a little bow to it. And then our floor pan, now the trunk floor, it's kind of hard to visualize, but it's actually kind of got a, kind of a dip in it this way. So that trunk floor and frame rails are absolutely 100% trash. Um, that's what I'm saying when I was doing this car, not really worried about making it, bending it back because I'm replacing all this stuff. No reason to waste the energy, but just making some observations. This thing got hit hard somewhere in its life. All right, so me, you, and the viewers, and everybody out there, next step here would be just go ahead and put a little bit of weld through primer on that seam to help keep corrosion down. And while that's drying, we'll get that floor pan all prepped and ready to go. Again, I'm not reusing these frame rails. I'm just going to use these as a point here as a reference. Now, I've measured from this flange up to the torque box up there in the front. We're within like an eighth inch side to side. I was kind of surprised this side wasn't pushed forward, but it's not. So I want to use this as a point of reference. I put that floor pan in, bump it up against that. So when I put 
this back into here, this area here will be resting up against those frame rails. And one more thing I need to mention, if you're messing with the convertible, you see this bracing right through here, and you'll see a little raised section. Now I replaced this rocker panel, but there's a little raised section because there's technically a panel that resides up slightly behind that. And that's these ears here. This is another brace that's typically only on convertibles. Um, you replace in floor pans, they put this on coupe or convertible, but this ear here actually is supposed to go up underneath that there. In the past, I've normally just kind of lob these off here and then put the floor pan in and then weld this back in. Um, I really don't want to cut this. I'm really beginning to think that I may, instead of, the reason it becomes a problem is you got to drop the floor pan in from the top. You got frame rails or firewall in the way. Um, even if the frame rails weren't in the way, it's kind of hard to tuck it up in here because it has to go over that ledge there. So you almost always have to inevitably drop them in. So my options are cut the bottom of this off or maybe just remove just a small ear here and then re-weld it. I think that's how I'm going to do this car. Um, but in the past, I have cut those. So if you're messing with the convertible, plan ahead. Either cut those out or I guess if you really wanted to, you can reverse the operation lay it on top and weld it in. I don't think it really matter a whole lot, but the factory, it's actually underneath, and this piece then goes on top. And if you look here at the passenger side, well, it's still their factory horrible, not so great MIG welds. I may clean those up and go over it one more time, but um, I, I don't think I wanna cut these off. So there's something else, as for a convertible, make a plan for this before you get too carried away. And then as for this flange here, if I wasn't putting a trunk floor in, it needs to be cleaned up, wire brushed or whatever, and then put some of your weld through primer. I'm just gonna use this as kind of a shelf to hold my floor pan into place until I cut this out. And this is a brace on the back side here that has that rubber bump stop for the axle. Um, I just haven't messed with taking that off yet. I'm just cheating for now and just kind of bent it down out of the way because I'm going to be taking the entire trunk floor out of this car. Actually, probably next, as soon as I get this positioned into place. Well, I, I guess one more little mention. I just kind of talked about these here, but if you buy an AMD floor pan, these are not installed yet. So that might be another way to sneak that panel in there. So another plug there for AMD. Didn't do it this time on this car, but I'm liking this panel. It has some advantage. It has this notch, has other things. There's pros and cons to, to manufacture these things, but I'm pretty convinced there's only two people actually stamping this stuff out. Um, I've already installed the convertible floor bracing. This is the original one that came on the car. I just had it sandblast and clean up. Look right there's the original part numbers or whatever the date code, whatever they actually put on that thing. But that is 100% welded in and ready to go. So I'm going to work on getting all the packaging tape and all the goofy stuff off it. Then we're going to get this thing in position and we're going to drop this thing in here and see how it fits. All right, floor pan in place, ready for launch. Give her a full send right here into place. At least that's my hopes and the goals. And if you guys can guess what kind of car that is there, I will give it to you for free. Just needs a little work put back together. Um, but nonetheless, we got everything prepped, everything ready to go, looking really good. I'm uh, hoping everything goes according to plan. This should fall into place. We'll do some test fitting and we're going to need this big old ratchet strap. Now I'm going to tell you why here in a minute and you will see why maybe two of these can become your best friends, especially on a car that's been crashed. But nonetheless, let's get that dumped into place. Oh yeah, one more thing. One last look here of the floorless mockingbird. Anyway, back to that. And of course, this is one of those times that it'd be cool if you had some friends that would come over and play cars. Help me put this thing into place, but it's really not that bad. So you want to see what that looks like. Have you given a full send? Not too bad. Kind of fell into place. Moved it around just a little bit. But I need to go towards the rear of the car ever so slightly. Uh, I did not cut these tabs off. I'm going to maybe lay them on top or cut them off, tuck them or anything. I, I just haven't decided. Just a bit of an experiment. We're going to see how that goes. Now what the huge ratchet strap is for? Well, look at the daylight between the rocker panel and the floor pan. I got nearly quarter inch, three eighths of an inch of a gap. Now I anticipated that, so I had the ratchet strap sitting on the floor. You can see my foot down here, got a nice even gap. That seems to happen when I cut these things apart. But even if you put bracing on, I still find that I have to pull the rocker panels in with one of those things there. So I need to get the position back a little bit. 
Then we'll loop two big ratchet straps, pull the rocker panels in, get the height adjusted, and we get this thing put in place with a couple screws. All right, well, here's your tip for the day. Chuck the four by four, BFH, that means your best friend. And we've got a little tap here. Slide this thing right, ish into ish place. Um, hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think that should just about do it. Now we'll get tape measure out and see how that works. But that's how I like to move this thing. If you need to go back the other way, just stand the seat base. That should be really, really close. So let's do some checking on it. I'll get you down here under the car to see what I'm working on down here at the moment. As you can tell, there's a gap between my floor pan and the frame rail, about a quarter inch or so. Um, the sledgehammer gets there and kind of bounces back. Well, this hole in the frame is fantastic. The only reason why I didn't cut these out. Then I'll tie that up here to the front drain plug hole in the floor pan. Then we just pull the cord tight here, ratchet strap it into place. And then you can watch that thing pull right into place. And watch how I do it with just one hand. Now check this gap out here. Already closed up some. One more click. And there you be. That's going to get us where I can start measuring and get things into position. But I love ratchet straps. They're going to be your friend from this point on in the car because you need to pull these panels into place. As you cut them a car apart, even if it's not been crashed, you'll see they pop, 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 move around. And now that I've got that position, we can start working on maybe closing up this gap here between the rocker panel and the floorboard. Oh, actually, before we do that, one more thing. If you notice back here, no more ratchet strap in the back of the car isn't bouncing up and down anymore because we're starting to relax. But you know what I'd like to find out is that we've completely removed the floor. What happens when I let go of this guy right here? Because she's still very, very, very snug. But I'm going to see if this thing even pops up. Okay, well. Okay, so the jack stand, I can still wiggle it. But look, I'm basically resting on it. There's not a lot of weight pressing on that thing yet. But it's, it's sitting on now. So we've definitely got a lot of the twist out of the body. But I'm going to leave this snug. So I bet you by the time I secure that floor pan in, our twisting woes are gone. Now, of course, the back of the car behind the rear floor pan is still twisted, but that's all getting replaced. But the good news is the front half is looking a lot better. So I'm going to snug that back down and work on getting those ratchet straps in. All right, got the straps all rounded around here. Now we see the pull up tight, snug. Give them a couple clicks. Now, a convertible rocker is super heavy gauge steel. There's no really chance of probably denting those. Like Coop, I've done this before, but he may put a little wider piece of metal on the corners because it, the metal on a Coop is a lot thinner. But normally, don't need to pull that hard on a Coop because it's got a roof. Okay. Yeah. Like I said, I'll show you the gap at the same time, but it's already closing up. I've only got a couple clicks out of each one, but keep working each back and forth until you pull these rocker panels back together and close that gap up. And then we can actually start adjusting the height to make sure where it needs to be. Basically how tight you gotta get these, I mean, kind of, that's probably like a C or a D, but go ahead and keep cranking on to like a high J and that would probably get you there. Now you musical folks probably just caught the jokes there, but. Much better. Okay, let me show you what we got. And, whoa, whoa. Look at this here now. We have a slight gap there, but I assure you it looks worse than it is with the daylight. I bet you if I took a pair, oh, here we go. Find a pair of, of vice grips here, I bet you this gap will close right up there. Yeah, cool. Simple as that. Now go ahead and clamp all the way down the whole edge there. It looks real good. Pull it up tight to the back. Pull it up tight here to the front. Um, that's a sticker. So anyway, the other side. Let's go check that out here. Yeah, same results. Very minimal daylight between them. Now what I need to do though, verify my body mount uh, heights are the same. Get my chunk of all thrown out. We'll compare that to what it was before. Now, if you guys all remember special tool Elemento PO, it's right here. Put that right in. Oh, it's actually sitting a little high. I didn't seat all the way down on my nut. About to maybe three sixteenths of an inch or it. 
eighth inch or so. So we're actually on, let me get this one out of the way. We are resting on it, but we're poking up just a little bit. So I need to bring this floorboard up just a little bit to get that seat all the way. Then we'll clamp that floorboard into place. So probably I'll take that back off. Let me see if I can put both hands here freed up. I'm gonna pry that up and then I'll clamp it again. Well, you know, sometimes the simplest answer is right here in front of you and typically the best. Um, but now I can use the floor jack I got underneath the convertible brace. I can actually work this thing up and you can watch that nut hold the phone steady, sell it right into place and I'll clamp that in. There it goes. And watch that floorboard come up and settle. Now that thing is sitting where it needs to sit. Now I'll go ahead and clamp this into place on this side. Okay, just so you wanted to see that maybe up close, slides right down into place. I'm resting right there on my bubble level. So we are good. I went in through a couple screws to hold it in. I'm gonna bounce over the other side, see how it's looking. Special tool, Elemento PO again. I made that up in case you guys didn't know. But definitely bottoms out. Let's take a peek what it looks like under here. And, oh yeah, we're hovering, I mean, what are they, sixteenth of an inch above it? I'm going to probably call that good. I may step on that and push it down a little bit, but that's actually acceptable. So I'm going to call that good. So I'm going to clamp that into place, put a couple screws in there. The last areas that really need to verify the height is here where the torque box ties to the rocker panel. Make sure it's the right height. So once that's good, the rest of it's not as critical. Try to keep it lined up with the pinch belt if possible. Then we'll go in here and we'll tie all the screws in like a vertical bracing. And then I'll actually reinstall this guy back on the driver's side. So when it comes to convertibles, what they do different than a coupe, we have these panels in the front corners, one and two. We have that bracing underneath, which you guys have seen, kind of makes like the you know, U shape, whatever, J, and the cross member. And then the convertibles also have this additional panel right here on the floor pans. That's the difference between a coupe and a convertible. Other than that, that center sheet metal is the same. So let's get the measuring these ones back here in the back. Let's get down here on the passenger side first. Now what I like to do, we're still going to use our bubble level. It is level and true to the floor, and our body is level, so now it's a good point of reference side to side. But I'm going to go where the frame attaches here to the torque box and measure to the floor. That's going to adjust the height. This is where the spring mounts to the car. So, just my thoughts, how I see it, that's the most critical point in relationship to our rocker panels. Now, as you can tell, our reading is, well, get the phone, the camera down here, 15 and three quarters to our top edge. Now, note, the floor pan is slightly lower than the rocker panel back here in the back. These aren't always true and lined up. I would rather know that my body line here, my quarter rocker panel line, and my floor pan is where I'm adjusting the height to, because this is what you're going to see when it's going down the road. So this side's 15 and 3 quarters. We'll jump over the other side, and if it's the same, this is going to have about uh, 3 sixteenths of a little flange hanging down. And I consider that kind of normal. You'll see that sometimes. But uh, do what you want with that information. But I'm going to check the other side and see if it matches. All right, let's hop down here on the driver's side and do the same thing and see where we're at. Let's see if we can flip the difference of it's matching up. Of course, getting us in here. This is my high-tech frame table, remember? Now, you've got access to a body table or a frame table. Hey, go for it. Jump all over. But my garage doesn't have room for those. So we just make do a little bit of the old-fashioned way here. So you get this perpendicular. And... I can get a straight shot on that and you can read that or not, but it's actually just a little bit high on this side. So you either need to bump the other side up or bring this side down. So since that side flange is hanging down a little bit, I'm going to bump it up just a shade and maybe then it'll kind of look like this side all tucked up nice and even. So I'll keep working on it until I get both numbers the same, but this is where I like to tie into it again, right where the torque box and the frame will meet up when it's all assembled. Okay, that looks a lot more good or kind of tucked up that up a little bit more. Still hanging down some, but really like that. So the next thing now is I come through here and do the normal technique here, the old VVG. Drop some screws every about two inches, inch and a half, and go down each rocker panel completely. And then I can pull these ratchet straps off. I don't know about you, but that looks a whole lot more gooder than the rusted, busted, twisted mockingbird body shell that we had in here only a few weeks ago. Moving right along on this thing, but... Uh, here's my two cents on bracing. Do what you want with the information. I always say this, and I'll say it to the, probably the day I stop doing this. The right way, the wrong way, and the VVG way. The VVG way is I don't mess with the bracing because if I would have braced this car prior to, you saw that gap on each side of that rocker panel. As this car rusts and falls apart, they do the same thing. They spread out. Those rocker panels get further and further apart. So I would have tied those together with metal. No way would I have been able to get the rocker panels to pull back in. I would have had to cut it loose anyway. At that point, what good did it do for me? 
But the flip side is you see me climbing on the floor. I got my bubble level. I'm taking measurements. I'm using that tape measure. I'm moving things up and down, in and out, using ratchet straps to play the note J to make it work. So do what you want with that information. The idea of me sharing you what sharing with you what I have done here, so maybe you can develop your own plan, use my plan, or use somebody else's technique. If it works for you, please use that way. And the result, we're just trying to put these cars back together, share the journey, have some fun, learn a little something, and maybe put some life back into this old Mockingbird so she can go down the road straight, doors opening and shutting, and looking like a really nice car without blowing the budget. Because, I mean, if you got an opportunity to use a frame table or frame rack or whatever or a big chunk of steel to build this off of, go for it. I don't have one. It's a two-car garage. Most of you probably don't either. That was the idea behind all this. So, nonetheless, I'm going to keep... Working on getting this floor pan welded in, that's probably not exciting. You've seen me do that before. So that's going to take up a lot of my time probably for today. Then other than that, I'll start working my way towards the back of the car. Working on pulling the quarter panels and the fender wells. And I'm going to do an inner, so don't want to miss out on that. So hit the subscribe, share with your friends. Let's make this channel continue to grow. And I really appreciate all your cool comments. Let me know how I'm doing. I appreciate it. It makes it feel like I'm doing some help out there. I'm doing some good out there for you. So... Nonetheless, whatever the heck we end up doing next time, I will grab the camera and hope to see you guys then.